I'm here with Joseph Marchant, Chief Executive Officer of Bibb Medical Center, and we're going to talk about today about the introduction of the release of the COVID-19 vaccine. Yes. And we have some news from the Alabama Hospital Association and from the federal government. And Joseph, I'll let you introduce this because this is breaking news for Bibb County and what it means to Bibb County. Sure. No, I, th I think it is exciting news. I think this has been a long and difficult year for everyone, and we're excited to to be able to see the first shipments of vaccine, you know, begin arriving in our state. I think the uh, the some of the large facilities have already this week received uh, some of the initial Pfizer vaccine. So that's good to, good to see. Uh, I've seen announcements from South Alabama to Coleman uh, and to DCH Regional as they've received their now their first set of vaccines for. Again, healthcare workers and first responders is the way that they've defined this. They're really kind of, you know, putting it categorically into two phases. You've got a big shipment that's coming in for the frontline healthcare workers and EMS, and then you've got some large pharmaceutical companies who've been contracted to work specifically with nursing homes. So I think people are probably being a little bit overwhelmed with all this information and really what this means in their local community. So has Bibb Medical Center actually received any vaccine? So we have not yet received our shipments of vaccine. However, uh, the, the shipment that went out to DCH this week, there is an allotted portion of that shipment for Bibb County. So what we're working on right now is working with DCH and their vaccination team uh, at, at one of their remote facilities they're setting up to look, you know, to look at any of our medical staff members, any of our EMS workers, first responders. We'll be reaching out to all of those groups over the next course of week to 10 days to try to get them on the schedule for an appointment. However, for those vaccines, they'll have to physically go to Tuscaloosa to, to not only for the first round, but they'll have to go back for the subsequent second round as well. Okay, so there's a lot of confusion, confusion including me, about the first uh, priorities, who's gonna get them, and you just said it, but would you say it again because the people who are looking at this are going to ask questions and that's the first thing that's on their mind. Sure, Is yeah. the sequence of how it's going to be rolled out and prioritized. Yeah. And I think you said that the first responders and the healthcare workers, of course, are going to be the first ones. But they have to go to Tuscaloosa to be to receive it. Is that what you said? That's correct. For yeah. this first round. Now what now what makes it a, a even further confusing is there's a second shipment of vaccines that are going out to rural areas. We will the week of Christmas there will be a shipment of the Moderna vaccine, which is the you know there's two vaccines. You can look at the Pfizer or the Moderna and they both, you know, are very similar but both have some some different storage requirements. The Moderna will actually ship directly to Bibb Medical Center, so we're expecting the week of Christmas that shipment to occur, and then by the following week, the week of New Year's, we'll be setting up our own vaccination clinic here on site for that same group of people, because of course, not everybody will be able to go to Tuscaloosa to receive the, the round that's available now. We know that Tuscaloosa is also working with many rural areas around them just like Bibb County, so it may be a delay or a, or a little bit of a wait time in order for them to get their appointment. So we're also working full steam ahead to make sure that we get our allotment that will come to Bibb, to Bibb County here at the hospital, get it in our freezers, and then begin, begin putting out information again to those same people. I keep saying it, frontline healthcare workers, and first responders. So that's the groups that the government has kind of outlined for us at this time. Um, we are, you know, again, continuing to receive updates almost daily as we have from the beginning of this. So, you know, those things could change, but I think what we're concerned about is the general public, you know, seeing these shipments of vaccines and thinking, okay, well, within the next two weeks, they're gonna be able to get vaccinated. That's really not what this is. This vaccines, these vaccines, there's a finite amount. There's not a tremendous amount, as you can imagine, that are being shipped out everywhere they're, they're actually, uh, you know, uh, kind of set aside for a couple groups of people. And then we're expecting that we'll have more information to come on the general public, hopefully by spring. We keep hearing spring loosely thrown around. We're hopeful that, that uh, you know, that, that it could be sooner, but that's what we're hearing right now. Right. Now, I know the, the, uh, the medical workers or the healthcare workers have their communication channels. They know who to contact and, and how to uh, get the get the uh, uh, in line for their vaccinations. The uh, first responders 
who do they communicate with to qualify and to get, get their appointment? Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a good question, and what we're doing is we're proactively reaching out to those groups. We don't want them to have to call initially because we're getting this information real, real time. So we, we have began already reaching out to different groups, and we will continue that over the course of the next week to 10 days to give them the option of working with DCH and their product or if they would like to, to try to get in line for the Moderna product that's coming into our facility here in the next two weeks, we'll be giving them those options. We're doing that with our own staff. Any that are ready and wanna get the vaccine today, we're trying to set them appointments up in Tuscaloosa. And those that you know, may want to, you know, that some are saying, well, you know, they, they may wait uh, the two, you know, two weeks and, and just receive their vaccine here. But we'll be reaching out to mayors about their police departments. We'll be reaching out obviously to, to fire and rescue and first responders, as well as, you know, the, the other medical professionals that we know are out there on the front lines. We know that dentists, we know that eye doctors, we know all of these people are providing care to people directly. And, and, and we believe that they all fit in the category of primary care, which is important. All right. Well, I know um, that you, I'm sure you get a lot of phone calls now. And I, I don't want to encourage you to get a whole lot more unless you have staff to handle phone calls. Sure, sure. Do you have a contact person that uh, handles calls from people to for information about this that you want to publicize? Yes, yeah, so I think any, any questions or inquiries we want to be handled by our communications department. So Nikki May is our director of communications for the community here. So I think we would want them to call the main hospital line 926-4881 and ask for her. And of course the, the receptionist will make sure that, that they, she gets transferred to the appropriate or the questions are directed appropriately. Okay, so anybody in the community that has questions that they cannot get answered to, yeah. Nikki May would be the contact person you'd want them to call. Yeah, she'll be the point person and if we need to arrange a clinician or a clinical person to actually call them back, maybe it's a question about the vaccine or something that someone has heard because we know there's a lot of misinformation out there about the vaccines and, and, and so we want to make sure our clinical team is available. Our medical staff, Dr. John Meggs, our director of clinical care, Robin Birchfield, uh, who's a nurse practitioner on our team, we want them to be able to, to call back and, and hopefully answer those questions. Okay. So we know that it's going to be uh, spring or later before the quantity of vaccines are available for the general public. We also know from news reports that uh, case numbers are rising uh, locally as well as statewide and sure. uh, nationwide. So what kind of an impact is that having on Bibb County? resources right now just yeah well i think i think resources are overwhelmed i think any anyone that's in the medical field right now whether if you're driving an ambulance and transporting a patient or if you're in the emergency department or if you're in your outpatient medical clinic and you're running a testing site which we have we've been blessed from the beginning here that both organizations cahaba medical Bib medical have maintained testing locations and and, and drive through testing from the beginning but all of our sites are overwhelmed everybody is extremely busy our emergency department are certainly uh, seeing a, an influx. This is probably the busiest testing uh, that we've seen from the beginning of the pandemic. So that kind of speaks to, you know, it's been a long eight months, but it's this is this is the busiest time. We do, we're doing more testing and we're seeing a higher rate of positivity than we've seen from the beginning, which both of those things are concerning. When you're doing more testing and you're still seeing the high positivity rates. So I think those are, are, are things, um, I think the, the, the large urban hospitals around us not having ICU beds is a big problem. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we have worked with partners with whether it be in Tuscaloosa or Shelby County for a number of years who have made ICU beds available when Bibb Countyans need those services. And we've worked hard to get those pa those patients to those, those units. We're concerned that moving forward the next few weeks, bed capacity is gonna be very limited and uh, you know it's going to be very difficult. So the the system is strained. Our staff has had a uh, had a long year. They've worked hard. That you know we can't say enough. Thank you to our staff for what they've done from the beginning of this thing. Uh, they they've left home every day in an uncertain time, and they've exposed themselves to a tremendous amount of uh, of work and and also you know put themselves at risk 
to, to take care of our community. So we're, uh, again, thankful for those for that group. Uh, we continue to thank them for what they do and are doing, um, not what they've done, because unfortunately we still feel like that we're in the middle of this thing. But, it, you know, we feel that vaccines are important to us, you know, seeing some light at the end of the tunnel. Well, as you said, uh, we're seeing some light at the end of the tunnel, but schools were just dismissed this week, I believe it was, or in the last couple of days, kids have been sent home cases are still going up. So what do you recommend for the general public and kids and parents who have got people at home right now uh, to be doing mitigation wise to protect themselves and their family while we're still waiting for the vaccine to get yeah. here? What do they still need to be doing for pr protection? Yeah. That, that they can do it. that's the best thing well i think from the beginning there's been three pretty simple straightforward recommendations from the public health guys i don't think that i will uh, overrule or tell anyone any different but i think uh, if you listen to dr scott harris our state health officer you know wearing a mask you know hand hygiene obviously being important and then maintaining you know social distance when you can and, and as much as you can appropriately so i think those are uh, those are the directives. I think what we continue to see as you as you do contact tracing, we know that a lot of this is is close proximal contact, and I think that's been the struggle with this virus. Uh, we've seen families, and it run through the families, run through households, com any anyone that lives communally with with other groups or travels with other groups. Those are those are where we've seen a lot of transmission. So I think that uh, the directives are are still pre you know pretty pretty close to the same. I think what we need is we need a we need a, a safe, reliable vaccine. We feel that the they have they've really worked hard to put these two units out there and make them available, and we're very hopeful that uh, we can we can achieve some great results with the vaccine. But I think right now it's uh, you know the the schools have made a decision to go virtual. They were already I think upon. Uh, their normal break for Christmas anyway. We know the holidays are a concerning time in which families gather, and we know that those are the gatherings that normally drive uh, transmission. So I think that we would just, you know, continue to say the same thing, and that's just yeah, everyone take those precautions and stay as safe as possible as we deal with something that is truly unimaginable and, and something that's pretty, you know, is, is, is historic. Well, while everybody wants to get together at holidays, do you think that... Uh people should be uh, cautious about family gatherings and still practice as much distancing as they can among family gatherings. Is that a good idea? Well, again, you know, I think that, uh, you know, that's the, the directives have been to try to limit uh, those gatherings, but I think that, you know, uh, get, gathering with your family is also very important to families emotionally. Some Sometimes family members, this may be the last family gathering that they're able to have. So I think that there are still safe and smart ways that people can gather and, uh, and still do the things that we know that kind of make us as humans uh, really enjoy the time with each other that, that we have. So I think... Uh, you know, I'm not one to say you, you shut down gatherings, but I just think there's a smarter way to do some of the things that we do. And, and um, I, th I think that's important that everybody uh, do what they can to, to, to pay attention to those things. Well, Pete, would you agree that people need to use good common sense about the fact that the virus is still here, it has not gone away, and you have to keep that in mind, whatever you do, the, the virus is still out there. And until the vaccine has been circulated among everybody yeah. is still a threat. Well, and I, and I would go further to say that right now is probably as critical a time. You know, we've talked about waves and it was projected early on there would be two waves. And, and what I would clearly say is this is that second wave that was projected. There was a time between what we saw the first community outbreak and maybe where the numbers did go down for a while. But as of today and as of the last two weeks, that is not the case. We're right now confirming more positives than we ever have from the beginning of this. Up Upwards of, of 20 positives a day just in one of our testing sites. Those are huge numbers for a community our size. So I would say not only is it still here, but it's probably one of the most difficult times, you know, and, and probably the most challenging time. And, and so that's why right now is more critical than ever uh, from the beginning of this to, to really practice those, you know, and, and be cautious. Um, but because, you know, we, we want to get to the vaccine point. That's where we're trying to go, and we're hopeful that, uh, that, that we're successful in doing that. Okay. All right, well then, uh, unless you have something else in particular that you want to convey, I think we've pretty well covered the uh, important parts about this topic. Anything yeah. else? 
Well, no, I think, again, just uh, the excitement around vaccines being shipped this week, I think it really is exciting. I think some of our healthcare personnel uh, and our workers are really excited about this, those that have exposed themselves to a tremendous uh, amount of uh, you know, patience and, and potential for harm. So I think that uh, that's the focus right now. We certainly want to put out as much information as we can about the general public vaccines, but we just didn't want anyone to, we didn't want to create more confusion in a very confusing time and people to think that they can get the vaccine now because that's not what this is. We're hopeful that everyone can have the vaccine that wants it as soon as possible. But right now we're, we're really limited to the numbers that we have available and there's some specific areas that the that uh, that we've been instructed that we've got to use, utilize those vaccines on. So thank you for coming today and helping us get that message out because it is an important message. Right, and I appreciate you taking the time to do it. And if you have more updates, so uh, we'll be glad to put out another message to the public, and the public will appreciate this one. Thank yeah, you, Justin. thank you, Mike. Right. Thank you.